What's up, all you proud hooligans out there? I hope you are, baby. This is Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. You can find us on all podcasting platforms as well as YouTube and Facebook and everywhere damn else, man. Today, we're going to be talking about going to a 1% motorcycle club party or choosing to go to an LEMC party? Say it isn't so, baby. Say it isn't so. But that's exactly what uh, we got in here for today's segment. Yes, uh, we're still getting a lot of feedback from uh, one of the previous segments that uh, we were uh, talking about. And I am so happy with the debate going on with what we have put out. But where did the proud hooligans come from? Well, you know, I had some snappy old fellow email me and say why the hell would you want to be a hooligan well i don't want to be a hooligan i'm a proud hooligan get it right we now have that uh because of your suggestion and banging on me and stuff we now have that merchandise over at our support store so make sure you go to the link and click on it and get your proud hooligan t-shirt now show your pride show them There are still bikers out there that know what it is to be a biker, non-PC, none of that funny business. We just love living the freaking life straight. Yeah, and a lot of these new age bikers don't like it, man. They don't like the greasy, dirty bikers anymore, man. This is supposed to be, according to them, a politically correct type of lifestyle my god so pound rock on if you're a damn freaking uh proud hooligan better yet proud uh pound proud hooligan man that's what we're gonna start uh show them leo we don't care so today we actually got a good debate before we go into the biker news segment Wow, interesting stuff, and I really appreciate uh, all the emails, man. Lots to talk about, uh, a lot of interaction with the audience. Rock and roll, so let's move in. Uh, hello, Hollywood! How you doing, guys? I'm from New York City. I still say Chicago has better pizza than you guys. Better hot dogs, you know. Who agrees with me? Come on. Chi town hot dogs over New York City hot dogs. You guys put sauerkraut and all that stuff on it. Uh, too much. I just watched your rant. Oh, I always rant. Uh, and I have to disagree with you on a lot of what you touched on. Well, you know, you don't have to always agree with me. You know, this is something that we call debate. What I say is not gospel. It's just an opinion of an asshole. Fair enough. I'm an independent. Well, cool. I am too. I don't support anyone. My only goal from this lifestyle is put it on the miles. I'm not looking for any brotherhood, but I totally get where this guy Kyle's coming from. This guy Kyle, a couple days ago, a couple segments ago, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, was talking some schmack, you know, schmack. And we began, uh, we even had a response from another police officer we did in the last segment on what he had to say, but this is what this has to do with every anything. Uh, it's interesting. He's not looking for any brotherhood. Uh, cops are just people. I thought they were actually alien lizards, if you asked me, but hey, everybody has an opinion. And NYPD are a class in their own. Well, they're probably right there with Chicago. They don't profile bikers here. Okay, don't lie to me. Do not do it. Do not lie to Hollywood. Maybe that's a Texas problem, like you say. But I don't live in Texas. I live in New York effing city. Well, you seem to be proud to live in and New York effing city. Which is cool. I'm proud to come from Chicago myself. Uh, but the problem here, well, the problem here is I don't care where you live. It affects everybody nationwide. And if you say it does not, 
then I would direct your attention to a House and Senate resolution that says profiling bikers is not cool at all. And there's actually been a couple states that uh, jumped on the bandwagon. And you can't tell me NYPD don't profile bikers. Come on. Cops are just people. I, I agree. They're just people. Again, alien lizards. Now, let's talk about New York City. I, okay, you guys are locked down like hardcore right now. You're like on house arrest. Uh, you live under the communist regime there, just like Chicago does. But let's talk like New York City here. You guys do have that accent. I got to give you that, man. You guys got a stronger accent than us in Chicago. Uh, if you want to attend a 1% function here, you got two opinion options. Okay. Why'd you put opinions? It's called options. Angels are pagans. The Angels Clubhouse had a drive-by last year. There's another clubhouse 20 miles away in Newark, New Jersey. You could go party there. But you might get beaten like a piñata at the gas pump when you leave the party. If you decide to party with the pagans, someone might come by and shoot the prez execution style. So try your best to stay out of the line of fire. It's a war zone either way you go. Now, I can see where you're coming from. I really can. I can see where you're coming from because we've actually covered these stories in the news segments of uh, Motorcycle Madhouse. So, you ain't lying, buddy. You ain't, man, and he's got a good point. It is a war zone. The one that happened at uh, the gas pump, I believe, was just a guy wearing support stuff, and I did not agree with that either there, buddy. I did not agree. I don't agree with any of that stuff. Why are you going to go bust on a supporter, man? I, I don't. I never got that. Uh, most of the time, they just buy these shirts off a of line. They have no idea what the hell they're getting into. Uh, and it causes feelings like this. Remember when I was talking about how, you know, independents turn on clubs? Well, you're seeing it right now in this discussion where this is how they feel. Also, I think these people are cowards and punks. Ooh, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Look at all the crap that happened in the media in front of the Third Street house. They get into a fist fight with a drunken 20-year-old over a cone in the street. And when they get their ass whooped, they pull out a gun and shoot the kid in the stomach. You know, that's one thing I never understood. What happened to the good old days where you get into some fights and you never had to pull out a gun? The worst you had to do was pull off a knife or something like that. But now, you know, the guns come flying and it ain't the old days anymore. And there's the story with the food delivery guy who double parked in front of the bikes for a total of two minutes. They needed two men to attack him. This was just a working man doing his best to support his family. Interesting. I have to look that one up. I really do. That one I got to look up. I don't remember that one, but I got to look up. But he's starting to throw a pattern here, if you can't see. Yes, there's a lot of these in the news. The last one, again, I got to look that one up because I can't attest to that one. Uh... But these kind of actions by clubs is turning a lot of independents off, basically, it's coming down to. Now, let's go on to the other side of the field. I've never been to a Punisher's party. Me either. But I'm sure I'd have a good time if I did. Okay. It depends on what your, uh, how can I say this? Uh, your in what you envision a biker party to be. Now, do you like titties? Do you like pink tacos flying around? Uh, do you like seeing some, uh, you know, horny uh, beggar babe in the corner doing some hum hum? You know, you gotta, you give me some details of what you think is a good party. But anyway, the way you party is up to you. When I attend a party or rally, it's not about the destination. Well, of course not. I, I, I agree. I get a few guys together and we spend most of the day riding. The party is just a pit stop. 
We do a pop-in, drink two or three beers, smoke a fatty. Smoke a fatty, baby. Pass, puff, puff, pass. Puff, puff, pass. Have a burger, then get back on the road. Hopefully you're not impaired, man. I hope not, man. I really do. I, I, I can't stand drunk drivers or driving under the influence. I just got to be honest. I really don't care what the guy working the barbecue does for a living. Your average independent is better off attending a Leo party than a 1% party. I don't want to be in a war zone or get photographed by the feds. I just want a burger and a beer. I love the show and find your uh, commentary interesting and entertaining. Keep up the good work, you two scriber. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. He made a lot of interesting good points, man. Uh, this is the way a lot of independents are feeling now in this current lifestyle. When they see that kind of stuff going on, they don't want to know part of it. A lot of people don't want to support it. They just want to go out, like he said, and ride, party, drink, and, uh, you know, go home. He's claiming, now again, you know, my uh, definition of partying is a little different. Uh, your average independent is better off attending the Leo party than a 1% party. How... It, it, <sighs> The, uh, can you argue with them even though that's not me I'd rather attend a 1% party than I would a Leo party because I don't mix with them guys you know you stay the hell over there I stay the hell over here I don't want to drink with you I don't want to break bread with you do your thing because you know just like that last uh, what's it called that last uh, guy who uh, wrote in you know if you want to be a cop, be a cop. If you want to be a biker, be a biker, which I approve 100%. Uh, his feeling is those people are cowards and punks. Well, you know, how can I not disagree with the the, fa the notion that a, a drunken 20-year-old kid, uh, you know, over a cone, when he got their ass whooped, they pulled out a gun. You know, I'm not one of those that, believe hey what the hell man you gotta pull out a freaking gun you know just fight it out man and afterwards have a beer or something but this is becoming the and i've been not talking about this a lot man the general consensus among independent bikers is that one percenters and their territorial wars is a lot of these guys now I'm talking with them man you know what I have to get both sides here you know this might not be my opinion but I have to you know put out what he's feeling he makes a lot of legitimate points a lot of these people don't want to deal with that anymore the stuff that you're seeing in the news people don't want to deal with this stuff used to happen all the time the problem is now it happens a ton more in the media. We didn't have all this internet stuff. When something happened and didn't, you know, somebody didn't pull out a phone and video record it and put it on the internet, and next thing you know, five minutes later, it's around the world. It's in the eyes of the public now. And I have to say, man, they don't like that crap. Come on. Even when I seen the video of the guy getting beat up at the pump with ball bats or whatever the hell they were using, that was some screwed up shit. I would have to agree. That was some coward ass shit. Again, I ain't taking no club side when it comes to that stuff. It's right there on video. It is what it is. I don't care if the guy's wearing support merchandise. What the hell does it matter? Again, they probably bought it on eBay. And if they did attend the party, who cares? They're just supporters. They're not actual members. Isn't that stuff supposed to be saved for actual members of the club? If you got a problem, have the problem with the club, not the people that support it because they're not patched members. But it don't work that way no more. 
you couldn't say, go over to them and say, hey, man, you know, you're in our area, take off the stuff, turn it inside out, I'll buy you a beer. Instead, he got his ass whooped by, a, you know, more than a couple guys. That doesn't look good in the public eye, man, and then I don't think it ever will. So those kinds of actions are starting to turn a lot of people off. I get people want to see all the clubs put in a positive light. I see that. I know that. I hear that. The problem is that isn't reality. It isn't. You've had beefs going on for decades, and they'll never be settled. Never. And should they? No. Uh-oh. Hollywood's going to get some bad emails for this one. But if, say, you know, take a family member. You lose your blood brother to some violence from these people. The Hatfield and McCoys, baby. Do you think you would, could ever let that go? No, you couldn't. So it's going to continue to go and go and go and roll. It's like a snowball. It just gets bigger and bigger until Frosty the Snowman's made. Should clubs care about what other people think? Well, <laughs> I say it all the time, yes. And the reason why is because if you don't, they're going to start electing some freaking idiots out there that pass these laws. The gang enforcement laws, remember that. Remember it. And next thing you know, everybody's targeted. Because Leo doesn't distinguish between hog or one percenters. And I can tell you what, civilians don't. They don't know nothing about it. The first thing they'll think of is the HA. That's the big one. They don't know the difference. And that's why, you know, I should cover this again about, uh, you know, this one protocol crap. Uh, the good for it is a lot of these clubs try to, t you know, keep these other ones in line because they'll bring the heat on them. It's actually a smart deal, but I think they've overreached on it. I really do. Um, but that's just, what would I rather do? I'd rather go to a 1% party, but that's who I'm used to being around. I'm not, you. I, I never, ever would go to a no Leo party. I just can't do it. You know, they might good, be good people. But my problem with Leo is this, and I'll say it straight out. Yes, there's some bad apples and MCs and... Oh, yes, there's some bad apples in freaking Leo because we cover them all the time. The problem is Leo has this God complex. They have a God complex, and I can't stand that. And some of the stuff that I seen uh, in Chicago growing up, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> that kind of put, and I don't want to hear, well, it's just some. Come on, man, it was all precinct. Anyway, so. What would you do? Would you rather go to a 1% party or a Leo party? Do you feel that Leos are more calm? There wouldn't be tension in the air. It would be an actual party. Or do you think the opposite? Do you think 1%ers are like that? Or are you afraid that something like what happened at that gas station to that supporter would happen to you if you go to one of them parties out there see the east coast is a lot different everything is like crammed together man it's like one big state out there i think man you got these little states like rhode island what is it like two miles long or something uh but everything is cramped out there so you got all these clubs and these areas and it's all been going on Midwest, it's a little more spread out and stuff. Uh, down south, same thing. Not west, you know, yeah, except on the west coast. But, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, uh, which party you would go to. Uh, we're going to pay a bill here, and then we're going to go into the biker news, baby. Your one-stop shop for all things vapor. Central Vapors is your vaping headquarters. 
and one-stop online vape shop for all things vapor. Find the best e-juices, like take advantage of cheap vape deals and buy premium vape juice liquids in stores or right here from Central Vapor's online vape shop. Rock on! Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on! Hi, I'm Hollywood. And I'm China Doll. Listen to the Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Rock on! Alrighty then, don't forget to go over to the Hollywood and China Dow show. Oh man, it's a good one, man. We're talking about Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a lot of fun over there if you haven't heard, baby. Also, go over there and get you some Central Vapors, man. Great stuff. I've tried them. It's good stuff. You can find that in the description box. The link. Just push that sucker and go over there. Now, we're going to go to the age, man. And no good, no good over in Australia. It will go down well at the Christmas party. Police of accused... Of stealing whiskey, you dirty bastards, you! By Cameron Houston. The owner of a wholesale liquor outlet has launched civil action against Victoria Police over allegations two boxes of Johnny Walker, baby, blue scotch whiskey. My Jack Daniels is actually mine, but I don't know. It's a good scotch, Johnny Walker. Uh, which one officer allegedly said would go down well at the Christmas party? We're stolen during the raids on the perennial business. Michael Jones, who owns a string of brothels. Hell yeah, but I like you already. In Melbourne's eastern suburbs, alleges in court documents that police also took an expensive pen and $1,600 cash during the 2018 raids, which were part of a money laundering investigation against the Comancheros. You dirty bastards, man. Dirty bastards is what I say. Mr. Jones was identified by Echo Task Force. Oh, Echo Task Force. They always got those. Hold on. Let's see here. Oh, there you see the pictures right there of the son of a guns. Friggin', uh, yeah, they're pulling it out there, baby. They're using forklifts and everything, man. You gotta ch come over here and check out this video, man. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Loading that stuff on a flatbed pickup truck. Oh, they do worse than Chicago, man. They do worse. Uh, he was identified by Echo Task Force at the time as a key figure in the syndicate that helped Common Cheryl President Mick Murray, uh, Murray evade more than $10 million in taxes. Ow. That's a thing about taxes I don't get. Okay, say you have a, I don't know, a dope business. Should you claim the taxes? That way they can't come after you. Just wondering. He was charged in March of 2018 with two counts of recklessly dealing in the proceeds of crime, three counts of false accounting, and four counts of possession uh, of the proceeds of a crime. Police also seized more than $800,000 worth of alcohol on palance from Mr. Jones' warehouse. However, by March this year, police had dropped most of the charges uh, against them while two remaining charges were withdrawn. <laughs> you suckers, you're pulling it out on pallets, baby. Uh, the Victoria Police was ordered to pay Mr. Jones' legal costs of more than $100,000 while the seized alcohol was returned. But Mr. Jones's solicitor, Tony Dennis, claimed several items were not returned and has accused police of not recording uh, some items that were seized. Quote, 
Two dozen Johnny Walker Blues not recorded by police and taken to a police car and told it will go down well at the Christmas party. <laughs> you slimy suckers, you. It also alleged a pen was removed from Mr. Jones' desk. Expensive pen taken and not recorded. Uh, they claim the client had been wrong. This is a matter of principle, and my client expects the items to be returned. Make them pay, baby. He feels slighted and wants the alcohol and other items back. A sworn affidavit by Detective Senior Constable Fiona uh, of Echo Task Force said the whiskey had been returned. The 1600 cash was retained as evidence for an upcoming trial and another alleged uh, syndicate member, but they were ordered to give it back. Give it back. We want it back. We want it back. Come on, man. Chant with me. Uh, yeah, right. No record of that pen. <laughs> I can see that all charges against Mr. Drones had been withdrawn, but said that the brief had been referred to the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions for assessment. Yeah, you dirty cops. I'm telling you, they're, they're going to be partying with that whiskey, man. I'm telling you, that Johnny Walker is going to be used real good at one of their parties, I can tell you. Now, let's go over to the com. An arrest is made in connection with the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club double murder in Camden. We covered that a couple months ago. Uh, let's see here. Actually, a couple weeks ago, wasn't I don't know. Uh, Napoleon! Hey, are you any relation to Napoleon Bonaparte over in France? Just asking for a friend. Two weeks ago, David Wilkes and his family decided to have a big celebration. On November 20th, they received the good news that an arrest was made in the double shooting that took the life of 38-year-old Jermaine Wilkes and 32-year-old Jamil Jenkins. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs when somebody dies. During the early morning hours of September 20th, David Wilkes was so happy with the news that he had tears in his eyes. Authorities in Camden County have arrested and charged 40-year-old Loren Lindsay in connection with the double murder that left two men dead after a fight broke out at a party inside the Wheels of Soul Motorcycle Club. The arrest was made on Friday, uh, the same day uh, the Philadelphia Sun uh, first broke the story. There's a mugshot here. 40-year-old uh, Lorraine Lindsay, who was arrested by U.S. Marshals uh, for the double murder. Uh, he was charged with two counts of first degree, two counts of second degree, unlawful possession of a weapon, and other related charges. He was arrested inside a home on the 1900 block of Pierce Street in Camden, New Jersey. He was taken into custody by the U.S. Marshals uh, Fugitive Task Force and transported to the Camden uh, County Correction Facility where he is awaiting detention hearings. Yes, there was a uh, arrest made in that one. Uh, sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. Okay, we're at Casta.net and a charity biker out of a contest. Uh, he doesn't make it to the next round of custom comp uh, chopper competition. Uh, even with the great support from the community, uh, a biker that was hoping to get into a competition and donate all his money, money to charity, has not made it on to the next round. Daryl Richards was campaigning to be fe featured on Dream Chopper's TV show and then donate his win to the, the Discovery House, inspired by its work helping men struggling with addiction. He expressed his mixed emotions on a post to social media, announcing that he didn't advance. It, quote, it certainly wasn't from the lack of trying, as we had many media outlets assisting us in getting the good word out, and most certainly not from lack of community support. We had the most loyal and aggressive phoning class. The organizers contacted Richards and expressed to him that unfortunately 
Ethel, the winner of my quarterfinal, has managed to win by buying his way into the next round. An option to pay for more votes in the... What? Get out of here. Buy his way into the next round. You dirty bastards. <laughs> you dirty, man. Just like Chicago politics and I bet New York City politics, man. Uh, quote, we accomplished some great things in this contest, raising awareness for Discovery House. And though that we opened up many doors for them and their financial support, companies have reached out to them that may not have before. That's a good thing right there. And that's what this was all about, helping Discovery House advance their fundraising efforts. I can't thank Discovery House, the local media, my support team helping me. And my social media presence, and especially you, the voters. We accomplished great things, and we won't give up our fight to help raise awareness for funding of such a cause. Sounds like the frickin' election that happened in this country. I can't believe they let you buy a frickin' way to the next round, man. You guys are crooks, dude. I wouldn't, if, Does this have to do with that frickin' Paul Tuttle? I can't stand that guy. Anyway, uh, iFiber or iFiber One, fifteenth annual Unchained Brotherhood Christmas Toy Drive returns uh, to Moose Lake, and that happened uh, actually yesterday, which was cool. Uh, the Unchained Brotherhood Motorcycle Club uh, held their annual Christmas toy drive. Uh, it's a toy drive by uh, toy drive. The next two Saturdays, I think it says. Yes, it is. Uh, the first one happened on the 5th. The second one is going to happen on the 12th. And it's going to be at the parking lot of uh, uh, True Value Hardware on North Straf Stratford Road. Uh, it's, again, collecting new and gently used toys along with monetary donations to purchase additional toys. Uh, they typically uh, raise about $10,000 during the, the event each year. Awesome stuff, man. Awesome stuff. Good to hear about that. Now, back over to Oz. Yes, acting a fool over there, that friggin' Victoria Police, man. Uh, they target uh, Mongols, the outlaw motorcycle gang, and national operation. Police have arrested six people and seized 14 firearms as part of a national day of action targeting the Mongols, outlaw motorcycle gang. Uh, officers searched the clubhouse and address in Yuku, uh, Isuka, along with several properties in Greater Melbourne. Six people have been charged with a range of drugs, firearms, weapons, and explosive offenses. A number of items were also seized from the properties, including firearms, cash, explosives, and a range of drugs like cocaine, cannabis, hallucinations, steroids and prescription medication you guys haven't got it legal over there i would thought oz would have done that already uh with cannabis police also served fire horn, uh let's see your firearm prohibition orders on 12 mongols and conducted compliance checks on a number of uh existing uh orders uh earlier in the week they seized 12 firearms uh, from two patch mongols Police also searched the South Meringue address and seized the suspected stolen Harley, drugs, ammunition, and uh, conducted energy uh, device. Two men who were patch members of the Mongols Outlaw Motorcycle Gang were also served with firearm prohibition orders and were expected to be charged in relation to the seizure. Echo Task Force, you know, the ones who stole the liquor. Uh... Yeah, you steal the Johnny Walker, you nasty people. Uh, we're involved in this one. Now, sad state of affairs. This one, sad state of affairs. Mom out of hundreds of dollars from eBay motorcycle scam. You gotta watch eBay, man. Weeks away, beware of scammers, especially those who take advantage of eBay's massive popularity. Yeah, I hate that we even have to warn yeah. you about this, but every day thousands of people go online checking for deals on eBay, of course. Well, a young mother thought that she had found the perfect gift for her teenage boys. However, as she told Six On Your Side consumer reporter Don Dare, the deal ended up costing her $800, Don. Oh, that's right, Bo. Scammers will use any available platform to trick innocent people out of their money, and eBay is no exception. 
The online site involves a lot of trust on behalf of the buyer and the seller, but it's relatively easy for that trust to be exploited, as an eBay user in Kodak has found out. Long ago, when the world was new... Every day before she goes off to work, Crystal Turner reads a story to her four-year-old daughter, Kylie. No, said the man. Like most moms, Mrs. Turner is looking forward to Christmas and buying that perfect gift for her kids. He has three children, including two teenage boys, Timothy and Thomas. The oldest was asking Santa for a used three-wheeled motorcycle, specifically a Can-Am Spider. These are new ones. They use an ATV-like chassis. It was going to be a Christmas present for my kids. You know, I have, they want one more in a full or one more in a day truck. So what was the best thing between it is the spider. This is the picture of the Can-Am spider she found on eBay at a bargain basement price. $800 I can do. You know, that'd be a heck of a Christmas present for my kids. Can you imagine them waking up with that in their yard? Considering the fact that it's $16,000 brand new. Yeah, 800 I was like, well, I can do that. I'm in the Army with my military medical team. The would-be seller, a Christine Lanford, the name the scammer was using, sent a series of text messages to Crystal describing... That Christine Lanford is also used on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, this is going on a lot. I've seen that name, and I've gotten a lot of uh, people uh, trying to email me, warn, try to get the word out, so you're seeing that there. Uh, but... Uh, uh, I hate scammers, man, and, you know, if you're going to buy that kind of stuff, make sure you use an escrow, a separate escrow away from uh, eBay. Uh, but I wanted to get to this one real quick. And uh, TSB, safety processes failed and crashed that killed seven bikers. Uh, the report, I guess, uh, was put out. Uh, the systems meant to keep motorists safe failed to prevent a pickup driver on drugs from crashing last year into an oncoming group of motorcyclists in New Hampshire, leading to the death of seven bikers, the National Transportation Safety Board found. Uh, the board unanimously approved a report that determined the driver's impairment from the drugs was the probable cause for him crossing the center line on the rural two-lane uh, highway and sparking the fiery crash. But it also blamed Massachusetts for allowing the driver, I don't say his name, to continue driving despite having infractions that included several for drunk driving. It also said a federal motor vehicle safety agency didn't do enough to address the problems at the company he worked for. Quote, there were multiple failures on multiple levels of the system. The system that is supposed to provide a safety net to protect us when we're out on our nation's roadways. NTB or NTSB Chairman Robert uh, Sumwalt told reporters, Unfortunately, that safety net had multiple holes in it. You think? He was uh, the driver was returning from delivering vehicles for a Massachusetts transport company and was towing an empty uh, flatbed trailer. Uh, the investigators told the board that he had drugs, including opiates, in his system. They also said witnesses had reported him driving erratically. Investigators found that neither cell phone use nor weather was a factor. They, however, couldn't uh, rule out fatigue, but concluded that its effects were unclear because of the drug use. Uh, the seven bikers were members of the Jarhead Motorcycle Club, a New England group that includes Marines and their spouses. The victims were from New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. That case is still ongoing right now, uh, So, but at least the NTSB got a report out on that, and that was on the 3rd. So, good news at least there, but I hope they freaking bury this freaking guy, man. Bury him. Uh, let's go to uh, my final thought. Visit Zero 3D for some of the best motorcycle accessories on the market. They have engine accessories, exhaust seats, and some of the best lightning on the market. Zero 3D is a trusted retailer of bikers and motorcycle enthusiasts around the world. Go check them out through the link in the description box on all Insane Throttle platforms. Rock on! Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. 
Okay, man, we are back. Don't forget to go check us out over on Hollywood and China Dow Show. Over on the YouTube channel, we do a lot of lives over on that one. Talk about all kinds of goofy stuff. So get over there and subscribe. Also, both shows, Motorcycle May, uh, Morning Mayhem, is over on all the podcasts and platforms, as well as the Hollywood and China Dow Show. Really appreciate the support over there. The radio is our main platform for podcasting, man. That's why we love doing it. That's why we got the studio set up. Don't forget to go visit our sponsors, man. Uh, Zero 3D, man. Got to love them, man. They got a lot of good motorcycle products. Uh, And uh, Central Vapors, it's all in the description section. All you have to do is click that link. Yes, it does help the show, man. So go over there and do that for us (laughs) because... God knows the platforms are censoring the hell out of us, man. You're hearing a lot of that from creators, aren't you now? Anyway, let's go. You know that last story? The NTSB, that was actually a big report if you're following this case because you have different agencies now talking about the drug use. You got the defense saying, well, it was the motorcyclist's fault because uh, they were drinking and they're the ones who crossed the line. I don't think it's going to fly. I just think that the defense attorneys out there trying to get some public exposure because usually they're freaking morons anyway, these public defenders. So that's what they're uh, doing uh, with that. But uh, as the case goes on, we'll keep you up with that case, man. And be careful when you're buying anything off these eBay, man, because you can't see what you're getting. If you're going to spend that kind of money on anything, Make sure you set up an escrow account through an independent agency. Because what happens is with escrow, they present the goods. You say, okay, I approve of it. Then the money gets released. It's a scammer's uh, season out there, man. And uh, you got to watch that on Facebook Marketplace as well. If On Facebook, if you can't pick it up and they're trying to send you those kind of texts, you know it's fake, man. Also, uh, good stuff. Uh, Holidays are in uh, full gear, man. All the freaking bikers out there raising money for kids, getting toys for tots uh, going. Awesome, awesome stuff, man. What do you think of those dirty rascal cops, man, over in Australia stealing that freaking Johnny Walker, man? You nasty, man. That uncool. Uncool. Go give the man his two cases back. That ain't right. Give him his money back, too, while you're at it. Don't try not to give him that money back and make him fight for it. Not cool at all. Not at all. Anyway, that is the show for today. Make sure you visit all the people that were backing up, like Serial 3 d and Central Vapors, man. We really appreciate it. They're good products and all that good stuff. Pound rock on and pound proud hooligan if you are one. Get a mad, baby. Get a mad. I'll talk to you guys later. Your one-stop shop for all things vapor. Central Vapors is your vaping headquarters and one-stop online vape shop for all things vapor. Find the best e-juices. Like take advantage of cheap vape deals and buy premium vape juice liquids in stores or right here from Central Vapors Online Vape Shop. Rock on!